everyone, Jim Jams here and today I thought I'd do a picture slideshow tutorial on how my tiara from Soul Calibur has been made. A bit of a disclaimer that the cosplay was not made by me, I'll link in the description below on the cosplayer that did make my cosplay for me, but it did need some alterations. And also the prop was not made by me, it was made by my partner. The wig on the other hand was made by me and on each step I will give you all the instructions on how all of them were made. Um, so enough of that, let's get to it. So as you can see this is the base of the cosplay. Um, this one's with the green with the white border around it. At the bottom she used a kind of a ripping technique with the scissors, I assume she's done that. And nothing much to it just yet, only because there's no teeth on it at the moment. Um, this one is just part of the main area that it's going to look like until she puts the teeth on top. In the second photo you can see that there's the PVC black leggings. She used the ones to make it look wet, um, just to give off a bit of shine to the leggings. She's also cut off a big chunk of the leggings due to the fact that Tira shows off a lot of leg and she's also replaced them with the straps around it. The straps are connected by the velcro and she's already added the teeth into them. The teeth, she's made them out of paper clay. Um, she did say they were really complicated to make but she did manage in the end to get them all on. This photo shows you the arms, as you can see that she's already applied them on. Um, I will admit they are big on me, so I had to cut them in half and re-sew them. And they did lose a lot of the puffiness on the shoulder bits, so I did have to re-poof them back up again. On the side she's used a thicker fabric in order to make the crosses that go down her arms. Um, I will admit they are a bit awkward to wear, but they are quite bearable. Um, so it's not the end of the world, but they are attached um, on each other. There's a big black fabric um, elastic band that goes across my back for them to reattach themselves onto. So you, it will um, feel odd at first when you're putting them on, but you will get used to it as the day goes on. In this one, it shows you the collar. She used a felt, I assume, as it was a lot thicker than the, than the rest of the fabrics. She did use the black one as well to create a choppy, cutty type of look around the um, long bits. Admittedly, it is really comfortable to wear. It wasn't um, any problems with this one at all. It was just really comfy, but yeah, <laughs> it wasn't too bad. It was easy to um, apply, not really much to it, but she did have a Velcro at the back for me to attach it onto. Here is the more complicated bit of the cosplay. Um, this one she had to use warbler in order to um, create the armour look to it. She did say it was a bit awkward to make as she had to try and piece together the characters of the, the little characters on her arms as well as on the belt bit. And she's also had to make it look a bit ribbed. Um, she did make it in the end, as you can see in the photo. It looks amazing. I'm so happy that she's actually got them right and done. And yeah, they just needed painting now. But she only just um, managed to heat them up together and mould them. And it's time for them to get glued on into the glove. This photo shows that she has painted as well as glued them onto a silk black glove. She did say that she used a hot glue gun in order to apply the warbler onto the, onto the glove itself and she had to put them on individually as it was a bit hard for her to glue it all on and then test it. She had to keep testing as she was going along with it. But other than that, there was no problems. It was fine. Um, like the, the detail looks amazing in the paint as it's supposed to replicate a metal from the armour itself. But yeah, I quite enjoyed them. <laughs> they are like one of my favourites out of the cosplay itself. In this photo she was showing me how she was able to move in the glove. She did tell me that it was a bit awkward for her to apply the warbler on. As I've explained in the previous photo, she had to glue and then test, glue and then test. 
um, in order for it to not go stiff as well as not being able to move in them at all. When I got them, they were a bit awkward to get on. Um, I wouldn't say like it was the hardest thing to do, um, but moving around, you did have a bit of a little bit of a struggle as the warbler at the, at the front of the fingertip was also connected to the back so each time you'd move your finger they kind of click together each time you move but there wasn't any over the top restrictions on that I just had to be a bit careful on what I was grabbing and what I was doing in order for them to not snap off or I lose my restriction in moving but other than that it was fine. Um, they were hard to get off, but they were easy to apply on. And here is the final result of the gloves. As you can see, she's also applied a bit of warbler onto the wristbands. Both of them are separate, so I could easily apply the two on without having any restrictions or having to mess around with them in order for them to not break. Um, but yeah, sadly, um, there was a bit of a casualty while I was at the Kitacon due to the fact that the warbler actually snapped off. It lost its um, grip on the, on the glue, so it ended up falling off and I could not find it anywhere. <laughs> so it was a shame, but I am planning to replace it and get it fixed. But other than that, um, there was a bit of a rub on your wrist so if you are going to make them yourselves just be aware that when you're moving your wrist as well as your hands um, there will be a bit of a, a tiny bit of a restriction um, only because if you move your wrist the plastic bit at the top will click onto your wrist and it will cause a bit of a rubbing but I didn't have like any it wasn't anything like drastic it wasn't like i had blister over my wrist or anything like that but i was just letting you know that if you were to make this yourself just be aware that you will have a tiny bit of a restriction on that but yeah i didn't really have any problems other than the fact that it did fall off i'm not 100 percent sure on why it fell off but it just lost its way it gave in and just fell off <laughs> Onto the feet bit of the armour, um, they are hard to walk in, I will admit. Um, walking up the stairs wasn't bad, but walking down the stairs was a challenge, as there wasn't much of a movement for me to do it. I had to walk on sideways down the stairs, as well as having to take my time, extra time, <laughs> to go down the stairs. Um, I was so paranoid in case I snapped either side off, um, and obviously I didn't want to do that because obviously it's a really nice cosplay so I didn't want to break it or cause any damages to the point where I have to re-replace the whole leg bit but these went around my around say my ankles um, yeah on my ankle bit and they were also attached onto the bottom of your foot there was a tooth that shouldn't have really been there um, as it was a bit harder for me to walk in one of them due to the fact that there was a tooth underneath my foot but I am going to admit these are the hardest bits to watch over as it's so hard to just move like moving normally where you don't have to walk upstairs or go downstairs it's fine there's no problems you can just walk freely but you can't run <laughs> so you can't run and you can't climb up the stairs but just a little bit of a warning to you if you want to do this cosplay just make sure that you know what you're into <laughs> if you're in for it um, just be a bit careful when you're going up the stairs as well as down the stairs in case you might snap the warbler piece as you can see this is a bell and it's made out of a thicker felt and the goat is attached on using the hot glue gun from the side you will see a full image of it soon there is a piece of fabric that goes all the way down to the floor it has teeth that goes all the way down and it is attached to the belt through the metal ring and another piece of fabric. I would warn you that it will move around and it will go in between your legs and this could result into the teeth snapping or your tights getting ripped or having small scratches on the skin so you will have to keep moving it back as the belt itself is supposed to be baggy. Now onto the wig. As you can see I bought a white based wig for quite cheap online 
I plaited the two clips in order to see where the purple and the pink bits will fall into place. Once I saw where the colours can go, I cut an old wig that I had for a cosplay I no longer had and started to sew it into place. Before I could sew it, I had to remove the clips out of the white wig so I can sew the section onto it without having any problems. Once that was sewn into place, I plaited it back up and placed it onto the wig in order to make sure that it was in the right place so I can move on to the pink section. I repeated the pink section in the same way as I did with the purple. Once that was done, I plaited it back up and placed it onto the wig again in order to see if the colours fell into the right spots when plaited. Then I repeated it on the second half, only with the pink, as Tira only has one colour on the other plot. Happy with the results, I started on the base of the wig, where it gets a little complicated, due to the fact that her hair has chopped bits of colour everywhere, as well as having to sew it on without popping it up or making it look a mess. And once it was all sewn together, I then started to cut the wig into place and then style it. And here is the final result. Once both plaits were attached onto the base of the wig, I then cut it into the right length. Then I wrapped the plait up in postage string, having a bit of warbler dangling off as she has a piece of accessories that are at the end of each plait. The part of the cosplay, which is her ring blade, as it took around three months to make. Before my partner jumped into it, he made a template out of card. Once he was satisfied, he then cut it out of the drawing and applied styrofoam onto it. Once it was dry, he then moved on to sculpting it into shape. Once the blade was sanded down, he then covered it in masking tape in order to make it flat so that he can apply the warbler onto it. In this photo, you can see that he has started to apply the warbler. Sadly, we ended up with the wrong type of warbler, but we went with it anyway due to the time was running out. In this bit, you can see that I covered the warbler in glue so it would make the surface smooth in order to apply the paint on. I had to do it several times in order to make it smooth as possible. That's the final result. As you can see, it is now painted on. Sadly, we had to cut the blade in half due to the fact it couldn't fit in the car. So we cut it and then made a little holder so that the blade could still be attached. I would warn you, um, before you make the blade, make sure that it is around your height as well as being able to fit in the car so you can avoid all the problems that we had. And that is the end of it. I hope you have enjoyed the video, please leave a like, comment and subscribe to see more. Also be sure to follow me on all of my social medias, link is in the link tree below.